Hello and welcome to another tutorial on direct and inverse proportion. Uh, the first thing I'm going to discuss uh, today with this topic is the fact that we don't always have it uh, have a question worded in exactly the same way. There's two alternative ways that these sorts of questions can be worded. Um, the first way is just to say that y is directly proportional to x or y is inversely proportional to x. But there's this alternative um, way of asking, which is to talk about variation. And the way that the question is usually worded is uh, y varies directly as x. Okay, that's exactly the same thing as asking, uh, as if it's telling you that y is directly proportional to x. And if it were inverse proportionality, y varies inversely as x. So just watch out for that alternative way of the question being asked. Okay, it's exactly the same as inverse proportionality, but the same method continues after that, okay, is what we've been used to so far. So just in case. All right, so on to the day. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at direct and inverse proportionality in context, so some real life situations in which we can solve problems using our skills of, of proportionality, of solving a direct and inverse proportionality question. So example one, the amount of money earned by Sasha, M, is directly proportional to the number of hours she works, H. After working for nine and a half hours, she earns 155 pounds and 80 pence. Express M in terms, in terms of H. Okay, so let's go and do our usual thing. The first thing we're gonna write down is that M is directly proportional to H. Okay, there are two variables. So part A, M directly proportional to H. Now, we've learned this, that we replace the proportionality sign by equals K. All right, so, yeah, as soon as we write that, the next line, we replace it with equals k. So we, we actually produce, instead of having that proportionality sign, we produce for ourselves an equation. Now we know a pair of values that work within this equation, given some value k, this constant of proportionality. So we know that when h equals 9.5, m, the money earned, is equal to 155.8. Okay, put 8 zero if you like, does it make any difference? Okay, so we can start to put those values in and work out what K is. So 155.80 equals K times 9.5. And from there, we can work out the value of K. So it's going to be 155.8 divided by 9.5, which equals... Uh, equals uh, da, 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 are you getting there okay 16.4 so I'm sure you beat me to it there 16.4 is the value of k all right so we haven't finished yet we've got this sort of halfway point there okay and now we've found what k is so we can write it all together m equals 16.4 h and that's the equation that links m and h express m in terms of h. There we go. Okay, so part b. Now we know this. This is our key to answering part b. Using the equation formed in part a or otherwise, find out how many hours it would take for her to earn £688.80. So it's giving us the value of m here, 688.80. And it's our job to find how many hours worked given the equation. So let's put this value into the equation, 688. 0.80 equals 16.4 h. So straightforward, we just need to divide 688.80 divided by 16.4 to find the number of hours uh, that she has to work. So let's go 688.80 divided by 16.4 is equal to 42, 42 hours work. And there's that question done. Okay, so you can see it's just it's just the same process, but it's just picking out the key bits of information, the key numbers. Okay, reading it carefully, but it's exactly the same. Okay, so we've done a direct proportional, um, directly proportional question, 
and we're going to go on to an inverse one now. And here you can see this vocabulary that I mentioned at the start of the tutorial. So alternatively, rather than saying direct, uh, so inversely proportional to, we can say varies inversely. Okay, and it's not a straightforward one because it's the square of the aperture setting f. Okay, so it says the shutter speed s of a camera varies inversely as the square of the aperture 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 setting setting f. Yeah. Okay, so when f equals eight, s equals one two five. Find a formula for s in terms of f. All right. So the first thing I need to do is take that first sentence and put it into an equation. Okay, so s first of all varies inversely. It's one over the square of f, f squared. Okay, same old thing. This becomes equals k. All right, let's turn it into an equation. So s is equal to k times by one over f squared. So s is equal to k over f squared. And there's our formula, okay, so far. All right, but we also, we haven't finished because we have to put in the values f equals eight and s equals one, two, five to find the value of k. So one, two, five is s equal to k over eight squared. Okay, so one, two, five equals k over 64. So we've just got to multiply those two things times both sides by 64. What's 125 multiplied by 64? It's 8,000. So k equals 8,000. Okay, so k equals 8,000. And so the final answer, if we put those two things together, put the k into here, we get s equals 8,000 divided by f squared. And we're done. Okay. Hence, okay, so we're going to use the formula the most sensible decision would be to use the formula that we've just worked hard to find. Okay, so hence or otherwise calculate the value of s when f equals 4. So all we have to do here is put f equals 4 into the formula. s equals 8,000 divided by 4 squared, which is 8,000 divided by 16, which equals 8,000 divided by 16 is 500. Okay, so what's that? That's the shutter speed. It's 500. Okay, so there's four marks there. So just a couple of questions to show you that these questions aren't any more difficult. Okay, it's just putting you into an interesting context. That's the only difference. And hopefully a bit more interesting as a question. Okay, so good luck. Hope that's clear. And look forward to seeing some work from you.